Good morning, fellow learners. This is your mentor, Ray Gapus, once again joining you for our set number 49 for this year's Next Generation NCLEX RN pointers. So, without further ado, let me first ask and knock on your very, very kind hearts to please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses. We've done this in the past two years so with great success and to help us achieve this once again this year, I ask of you only one thing, please just watch and finish the ads in our videos. That's all you have to do because the proceeds of our videos would usually go to um, scholarship grants to finance the review and the application of our less fortunate brothers and sisters in the healthcare profession. So let me begin with our set number 49 pointers. The first question that you need to ask yourself when you are preparing for the next generation NCLEX is, what are the things that I need to study? And for this, you need an expert opinion, not just any mentor, who have, has yet to finish or even take and pass the NCLEX RN. You have to look for mentors who are US licensed because you can rely on them in terms of their experience. At the Regapo system, we're banking on my 30 years of being a mentor since 1993. In fact, I'm celebrating my 30, 31st year this year. So, for this session, I'm going to talk about the chest drainage system, specifically the use of the thoracic catheter. Now, a thoracic catheter is a sterile tube. It is inserted in the pleural space to drain either air, if it is placed above the second intercostal space, or fluid, if it is placed between the fourth and the fifth intercostal space. So it is expected to be airtight. Now, a thoracic catheter is also indicated for spontaneous pneumothorax. That means there's air outside the lungs that could potentially compress the lungs and would eventually diminish breath sounds. Pleural effusion, accumulation of fluid in the pleural space, in which case, once again, it can potentially compress the lungs. And when there's open wounds like a stab wound, gunshot wound that leads to traumatic pneumothorax, which means there's an increase in the tension that could potentially once again lead to collapse of the lungs and of course cardiac tamponade so when you have cardiac tamponade you have accumulation of blood in the pericardial sac around the heart so that could potentially compress the heart and would give rise to best triad now remember in cardiac tamponade there are two main issues one you have accumulation of blood which definitely could lead to congestion around the heart leading to distended neck veins and of course the second one is because of the bleeding then the blood pressure drops so when you talk of the back triad you have distended neck vein hypotension and muffled heart sounds those three would tell you that the client is suffering from tamponade or cardiac tamponade so remember the indications for a thoracic catheter, the code is spot, spontaneous pneumothorax, pleural effusion, open wounds, and tamponade. Okay, so a chest tube drainage system using the thoracic catheter must always be placed below the drainage site and secured in an upright position attached to the floor of an IV pole. So this is how it looks like. So since it is designed to drain both air and fluid, it has to be below the chest level. Okay, so what are the safety equipment that should always be at the client's bedside? So you have two guarded clamps just in case there's an air leak in the system. You would need that, sterile water, vaselinized gauze. If the client is in the room, you have to have this. Why if the client due to confusion, could accidentally pull out the chest tube, then you need to use the vaselinized gauze to cover the open wound, such that air will not enter the thorax. And when that happens, when air enters the thorax, it could potentially compress the lungs. And of course, you need your 4 by 4 dressing and waterproof tape. Now take note, if the patient is on the way, for example, to the x-ray laboratory and you don't have a vaselinized gauze with you, 
the most appropriate thing that you can do to preserve the negative pressure within the thoracic cavity if the client accidentally pulls out the chest tube is to cover the wound with any material available. Now, remember this. The chest tube drainage system is never clamped routinely. I repeat, it is never routinely clamped without a doctor's order, except when three situations in which you need to clamp it, it is being changed, or two, there's an air leak, and we'll talk about that in a little while, how to recognize it, and three, if it is disconnected. Now, milking or compressing the tubes or stripping the tube in order to remove the obstruction should never be done as it generates extreme pressure. So do not milk, do not compress, do not strip the tube. Now to document air leak, so we have here an example of your plurivac. So this area that I'm pointing here is the drainage collection chamber. And then the area colored teal, or this is a variation of blue green, is the area where you have the air leak monitor. So you have several chambers there. Here you have chamber one, two, three, four, five, and six. So for example, if you notice bubbling in chambers one, two, and three, and then you can just document it by writing down air leak three, which simply means there are three chambers that are bubbling. And of course, the reddened area here is your suction control area, okay? So don't forget the three areas. You have your collection chamber, the air leak monitor chamber, and of course, the suction control chamber. Okay. So a large amount of red drainage indicates hemorrhage. And so therefore, it is important that every shift, you have to take note of the amount of drainage that has accumulated in the bottle. So a drainage that suddenly decreases indicates a blood clot or obstruction in the system. So when a client has a chest tube drainage system, what are the things that we need to document? First, remember the code PAPS BADS, okay? So pain, we have to ask the client if there's pain, the presence of air leaks as evidenced by uh, bubbling in the air leak monitor of the system, fluctuation in the water seal chamber, it's called tidaling, that is normal and expected. The presence of crepitus, so that indicates subcutaneous emphysema. And of course, you have to monitor breath sounds on both lung fields, appearance of the insertion site, whether it's inflamed or if there's pus or discharge, and then the presence of um, the drainage and the characteristics, and of course, the suction amount. Now, in the traditional three-way bottle system, let's take a look at this thing. So we have the first bottle here, that is attached to the client, and this is called the drainage bottle. So notice that the two rods do not come in contact with the drainage. Now remember the drainage bottle is not routinely emptied. So every chef, you need to mark the area where the drainage is, such that you have an approximate amount of drainage that has accumulated in the bottle. Now, from the first bottle, notice that there are also two rods. The first rod is immersed um, two centimeter in two centimeter water. Why is that so? Because that is done in order to prevent the re-entry of air that has been drained and that has escaped from the system. So once air has escaped from this area, it can never go back into the tube and to the chest of the client because the water seals it. That's why sometimes the second bottle is called the water seal chamber or it's the trap. So it prevents the re-entry of air. In other words, it traps the air. So the third bottle 
can be easily noticed because you have three rods. So two equal rods that are above the water levels and the third rod located in the middle must be immersed in approximately 20 centimeter water. Why? In order to achieve the right amount of suction. And the third bottle is connects, connected to your suction source. Now, what are the things that we have to remember? If in case the client accidentally pulls out the test tube and you are inside the room, the client is inside the room. So all you have to do is to get a vaselinized gauze and cover the chest wound. Now, if at any point in time, any of this bottle breaks, so that's one of the situations in which you can clump the tube or better yet, you immerse the tube on an, in an extra bottle that's also with water that acts as a seal. Now, what are the things that we need to know? In the second bottle or the trap bottle, it's normal that there's an upward and downward movement of fluids. We call it tidaling. That indicates that the system is working. If the oscillation, tidaling or upward and downward movement of fluids is not present, it could mean one of two things. One, there could be an air leak or two, the lungs could have completely re-expanded. So in which case, you need to refer it to the physician and the physician will validate it through one chest x-ray, okay? Now, the third bottle is the bottle in which bubbling is considered normal because it indicates that there you have the right amount of suction, which simply means if you have bubbling in the third bottle, no need to report, it means the right amount of suction is achieved. If bubbling occurs in the second bottle, it could mean there's an air leak. Now, you have to learn how to differentiate bubbling from oscillation or tidaling or the upward and downward movement of water. So in the second bottle or the trap bottle or the water seal bottle, when there's an upward and downward movement of water that is normal, when there's bubbling, report. In the third bottle, bubbling is considered normal and you don't have to report it, okay? So to obtain a suction of negative 20 centimeter water, set the tip of the tube 20 centimeter below the surface of the water. Now remember, once again, the tube on the third bottle, meaning the third rod, should be immersed 20 centimeter below the surface of the water. And take note, if you're using the plurivac, then make sure that the suction is at 20 centimeter water, okay? Now, pay particular attention to the parts of your plurivac. We have the collection chamber. So these are the ones you'll find in white and you have some marks as to the amount of this charge. If this gets filled up, it goes to the second level. If it gets filled up, it goes to this area. And then we also have the air leak monitor that contains small chambers when you can monitor the bubbling. And of course, we also have our suction monitor area. Okay, so if we're going to place the traditional three-way bottle system, side by side with the plurivac, then let's identify the parts. So the drainage bottle or bottle number one corresponds to the area where you have the collection chamber in the plurivac. The trap bottle or the water seal bottle corresponds to your air leak monitor where you will note bubbling. And then the third bottle corresponds to your suction control bottle. Okay, now, Here's an inspiring message from one of our pastors, Elspeth. Actually, all quick fix serve, okay? Serve, help her the most. 
And then she says, makinig lang talaga sa inyo, naririnig ko nga ang boses nyo habang nag-take ako ng exam. So as if she's hearing my voice, so it's important they have to listen to me. And then I told her, nag-auditory hallucination ka? Did you have auditory hallucination? And then she says, yes sir, kada read ko sa question, naku, sinabi ito ni Sir Ray. So it's as if she remembers that I blurted out those concepts during the quick fix. So I said, congratulations. And then she says, grabe ka sir, iba talaga pagkapos baby, salamat po. So, she's just saying thank you that she's a Gapus baby. Okay, so, join our hundreds of thousands of passers from all around the world who pass NGN through our system. And the second requirement when you're studying for NGN is the use of technology. At the Ray Gapus system, our learning tools are produced and printed by world-renowned publications company, okay? And I asked Gladys, one of her passers, which book helped you the most? She says, the quick fix survey, the best. Sobrang dami po ng case study ko, baka alam po niya na sa inyo ako nag-review, pati po pala yung course shell. So I asked, which part of our course shells help you? Lahat po, sir. Pero nag-focus po ko sa activity number three and eight. Sobrang sinunod ko po kayo, talagang sulit na sulit po, sir. So, remember in our course shells, you have eight different activities per, score, per course shell, and it covers all the subject areas on the NCLEX. So you have safety and infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion and maintenance, management of care. You have physiological adaptation one, two, and three, reduction of risk potential, and psychosocial integrity. And of course, the third but the most important requirement when you're preparing for an NGN, you have to be in a conducive environment. Here at the Regapo system, we're the only test preparation center with a complete technology-based simulation room for the NGN. And of course, our class are very our classes rather are very comfortable. We maintain the standard number of students per class in a fully air-conditioned room. So we'd like to invite you to join us for our next class on the next generation NPLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NPLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499, including live face-to-face -face class, your choice of live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank and three books, plus my NGN strategies, which I'm going to share with you through a live face-to-face -face class, including my most hot after three days quick fix session. So all in all, we can be very, very flexible to enable you to keep your job and at the same time, preparing you to turn your dreams to reality. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus at your service. See you in my next video. I hope you like this. Take care.